Games Workshop is doing a rare bit of outreach today. A community survey has just gone live that I genuinely think is going to shape how 40k is going to be updated in the future. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought I'd just share some thoughts on this latest 40k gamers survey that's just gone live on the Warhammer community page today. Basically this survey seems to be asking for feedback on a whole range of different issues around 40k the game. I think it's Games Workshop trying to get an idea of exactly how people like to play 40k in the real world, what people's perceived issues are with the game, and there's a couple of really specific questions that I think are going to be straight up votes as to whether things are going to be included in the next edition of 40k. In particular, it looks like stratagems might be up for debate, and there's a question in there which I think is Games Workshop basically asking, do you want this in 10th edition 40k, or do you want stratagems in general to go the way of the dodo? The style of the survey itself seems quite similar to the big community survey that they did several years ago. That one was a bit more general in scope. I wasn't quite as laser focused on the actual game rules, it was more sort of what sort of model releases would you like to see, and what sort of direction should we go in at the moment. I believe that they do genuinely listen to these surveys and try and respond to consumer desires. One of the things that came out of that last community survey was an overwhelming desire to get the Sisters of Battle range redone, and a couple of years down the line they went from a range of entire metal models from the early 2000s into an entirely new range of extensive plastic kits. I think that these surveys are well worth completing, as they might well change the game as we know it in the future. I think from the survey they're trying to get a handle as to how people play 40k in the real world, what proportion of their customer base is interested in various different aspects of the game, and maybe just to try and get a bit of guidance as to how they go with the rest of the 9th edition rollout, and with 10th edition 40k whenever that comes out. I'm certain that that's going to be a good few years away yet though. I do wonder if the survey's been launched partly in criticisms to 9th edition 40k. Personally, I can still say that I'm absolutely enjoying 40k at the moment. 9th edition certainly has its faults, as every edition has beforehand, but it does seem that game sentiment does seem at a bit of a low point since the launch of 8th edition, but that might just be myself reading a bit too much into what the internet has to say. I think some of the main issues are things like too many layers of complexity, imbalance between the codexes to a pretty crazy extent, and the fact that a lot of armies don't have the 9th edition codex out yet, which would probably fix the former complaint at least to some extent. Out of these issues, the survey really seems to focus on over-complexity, and whether people aren't particularly liking the rules bloat of 9th edition. They don't really ask all that much about codex balance, but I think it's still a very big aspect of why people are a bit frustrated. I think perhaps to an extent Games Workshop does have a bit of deliberate imbalance going on with the codexes, to allow everyone to get a big boost when their 9th edition book comes out, and get people very excited about the release of their army. It's certainly not all that great though while you're waiting, and it means that a lot of armies just can't function against each other competitively very well, possibly to a worse extent than through a lot of 8th edition. We'll take a look at a few of the more interesting questions in the survey in a second, but I do think it's genuinely worth completing. If there's things that you don't like about the current game state of 40k, then this is genuinely the chance to make a difference with it, and I'll link the article down in the video description. So let's go through a few of the more interesting questions in the survey and how I thought about responding to them. First up, there were a fair few bits of demographic type stuff, how regularly you're playing 40k, how long you've been playing for, and tellingly a question on household income. Games Workshop do like to be following the sales and the money after all. Then there was a question about how regularly you play in events or tournaments. Competitive and tournament play has become a lot more of a big thing in 9th edition, maybe more so than virtually any edition in the past. Though from my general sense of the community at whole, I still think it represents a minor but prominent part of the community. I really enjoy playing in tournaments, but I think that the competitive scene is maybe the tip of an iceberg, and it tends to get so much attention because it's the most engaged players playing with the armies at the highest level, even though I strongly suspect that Games Workshop's average customer plays on a far more casual level, or even just paints and collects the miniatures without playing too much at all. Obviously, I really enjoy playing competitive 40k, otherwise I wouldn't be making this channel right now. And I think that generally, if you can get the competitive scene right, it will have a bit of an in-game balance effect that trickles down to the other armies. We're only seeing a few codexes win tournaments all the time at the moment, and that kind of shows which armies need a buff, and which ones might need reining in a bit. They ask a fair few questions on what playstyle people play 40k with, whether they play open play, narrative play, or matched play, and interestingly they divide matched play into both casual matched or competitive matched I do find it kind of funny that they're dividing their three ways to play into four ways to play, but I feel like it's quite realistic that they do so. I think a lot of people just play quite simple points-related games without having to go all in and bring the absolute strongest thing that they can. 
and match play can be quite a different thing if you're just playing with the Eternal War missions in the main book, or whether you're going for the GT pack and all the updates that that brings. Personally, I prefer playing with the GT mission pack at the moment. I quite like the updated secondaries and things. I feel like it adds a fair bit more balance than the standard book missions. They also ask which mission pack you're playing with and how many points you're using in-game. Certainly on the competitive scene, things tend to be very fixated on 2k point games, though a lot of people tend to play with less than that. More casual combat patrol or incursion games as a nice bridge between the two. I must admit, I certainly wouldn't be against playing a few more 1k or 1.5k games of 40k, though at the moment I almost always play 2k myself. There's then a question of points versus power level. I would guess that more people use points than power level, though I must admit I'm not sure. It'd be really interesting if Games Workshop does decide to publish the results of this to any extent. It could give some interesting insights as to the 40k community as a whole. I'd guess that points might win out. I feel like points are still relatively easy to put an army together with and do add a bit more nuance. Power level is certainly super quick, but I just find it a bit weird the way that you could be having a squad armed with all the heaviest guns and snazziest gear, and that would cost the same amount of power level as a squad that's just bare bones. Personally, I feel like points aren't really all that much more effort, and are at least a fair bit more reflective of the unit's actual abilities. Then they ask what you enjoy about 40k, and how important winning is to you. They give plenty of options to choose from, and I find the winning questions interesting. I think the question was how much you play to win. I feel like most of the time when you're playing a game, you do play to win to some extent. Obviously though, that's a bit of a spectrum. I think you can absolutely certainly play to win without being win at all cost, or being super disappointed if you lose. That's kind of just the nature of playing a game that you are going to win and lose some. From there, there's a whole ton of questions about game complexity in general, about the game rules of 40k in general, the mission packs, and building a battle-forged army. And they do have quite a few questions as to how complex it is for new players to start. I must admit, I think if you were completely new coming to 40k, there'd be a whole ton of things to learn. Certainly a bit of a learning wall to get over. And I feel like 9th, with all of its layered rules in codexes in the main rulebook, has become more complex than 8th edition was. I have a feeling that if Games Workshop does update the game in a major way in 10th edition, we're going to see at least some of the removal of the layers of special rules that you can have. As I could see why it could just be a bit intimidating to new players, where they can't just field a space marine without having to think about things like combat doctrines, shock assault, bolter discipline, chapter tactics, various stratagems, buff from characters, etc. It's just quite a lot of layered rules on units that should in theory be fairly simple to field. I feel like it's less of an issue for people who are already really quite invested in the game and quite familiar with it, but I could see how it might be a little bit tougher to break into. In particular, and tellingly, there was a specific question devoted to stratagems just alone, and it basically asked a few different things, whether or not you think they're fun, whether you think there's too many of them, and whether or not you enjoy them as a game mechanic. I genuinely think that the results of that poll might well determine whether stratagems appear in 10th edition 40k in general. Personally, I do quite enjoy them, I think they add an interesting element of resource management when commanding your army, but just for the sheer amount of stratagems that are available in the game at the moment, I think it makes dealing with other armies a little bit tricky. In reality, I don't think anyone has the headspace to remember every single stratagem for every single army in the game, and it leads to quite a few gotcha type scenarios, where a unit suddenly pulls out massive extra defence or damage out of the bag, in a way that if you're not super familiar with the opponent's army, you might well just not see coming. I kind of enjoy them, but I do see some of the issues with them, It'll be interesting to see whether or not they stick around for the next edition. Finally, there were a couple of questions on rules errata, and the rebalancing that they do with points cost. There's questions on whether or not they're good for the game, and how frequently they're done. A bit of a general question as to whether or not people want more of them, less of them, or the same amount. And I'm kind of hoping that they don't step back on this too greatly. I think that as it goes, the rebalancing and rules changes are a really good way of reining in the armies that are too strong and maybe giving a boost to armies that are struggling at the moment. Their last chapter approved book that they came out didn't get all that favourable a reaction from you guys I saw, but I'd argue that's maybe because they just didn't go far enough to make any meaningful changes to most armies, and didn't give any of the ones that were struggling a decent power boost. I really do like the idea of regular points changes, though I much prefer it when they do it as a digital download, as opposed to trying to sell you a new book that's just got points values in it but they do actually need to do a bit of rebalancing in it, and not just tweak a few certain units. It was a bit depressing to see armies like Tau, Gene Steeler Gold, and Guard not really getting any sort of buff, despite being at the bottom of the barrel for quite a long time for tournament play. Just in general with erratas and rebalancing, I think their current approach to fixing their mistakes is a good thing, as opposed to just leaving them to rot as they would have done in previous editions. I guess the frequency of their changes is kind of up for debate. You kind of want it frequently enough so that things that are going to get addressed do get addressed, 
but you don't want daily or weekly changes to the rules so no one has any idea what's going on, as that's just going to confuse everyone and people aren't going to keep up. In general though, I really hope that they don't step back too far on the game support they've been giving. I don't really want them to go back to the days of when they don't bother to fix their own mistakes. So anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know if you found anything else interesting with the survey and how you'd like 40k to change. As always, I look forward to hearing your thoughts and ideas. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, or I'll certainly keep up with any 40k news and developments. I usually post new videos each day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page, which is down in the video description. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, such as seeing videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with the chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.